Hello, so this is going to be the next update uh, since the previous one, which is about about a week ago, I think, but I've made a bunch of progress and I just wanted to record that progress just for myself. Um, so yeah, let's demonstrate what I've got. So since last time I've done some, some nice little updates, some fun ones, uh, nothing too crazy, but yeah, some, some cool things. So rather than starting with all the weapons, you start with just the pistol and the, and the shotgun. Kind of like Tomb Raider 2-esque, you know, you have your pistol and your shotgun, the shotgun has less ammo. Um, I've just done a little overhaul on, on the UI stuff, so obviously you've got the ammo in the bottom right, I think it's more like traditional, I guess, uh, compared to what I had before, everything was in the top left. Also, obviously, in the bottom left, I have I have the shields and so the armor and your health as well. So as you take damage, you lose your shields first. Um, and then once all your shields are gone, obviously, your hearts start going down as well. So you take them close out with 20. Uh, you got 10 shields, 10 hearts, but obviously I can set that up to be whatever I want. You might notice in the, in the top right here, I've got the little random box, so uh, let's earn some points. Let's, let's kill these zombies. Um, so I've got a little cheat on by pressing T, just replenish the jammer rather than having to wait for the reload every time. Um, but yeah, we can switch that. Yeah, I'm now using Q to switch weapons as well. I think it's a bit more, I mean, just for the two weapons, you know, press Q, alternates between the two. Um, also change the fire rate for the pistol. I feel like, I mean, it's 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 not automatic, but if you've got a good trigger finger, I think that's like you know you should be able to fire as fast as you want. Okay, we need to kill some more zombies, get some points. Um, I should probably make a shortcut for some extra points, to be honest. Um, let's um, let's get rid of these guys. We'll save the zombie and then make my life a little easier. And I'll show you the random box feature. So. As you can imagine, it's very much like Call of Duty. You go up, you press E, it spins through. I've got the pistol click sound. Um, and then you go up to it, and then you press E to take it, and then it switches out for your current weapon. Puts in the new weapon, gets rid of the old. So now I've got the double barrel and the pump action as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the main feature I've been working on this week. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I had to restructure my whole weapon class system. Because um, originally I was using struct. And then I was adding those to a list, but I was having issues accessing those and changing values and stuff with the mystery box. So I decided to go and basically sort of do a big overhaul of the weapon class system. And now each weapon is just a game object. So if I decide I want to add a new game object, I will just, uh, uh, a, new, a new weapon, sorry, I will just make a new game object and then put the master weapon script on it and then fill in the values, uh, which I can demonstrate in just a second. Um, but yeah, I'll um, go from a little demonstration of a in the code in just a second. Let me just put the zombies. So yeah, let's go spin this again. Let's see what we get. I do sometimes get a bug um, where the box sprite will come on top of the uh, the weapon sprite. Um, it will close too soon, which is really strange. Um, also, if I if I do spin the box, let me um, let me just get enough points again. So if I spin the box and then after 10 seconds of opening, it should close. But I think the 10 seconds is, it should be accurate. I've had a few times where I, I don't know whether it's just the way, yeah, the way I've been dealing with it, but there was a few incidents in, incidents where um, it closed prior, but I'll have, to, I'll have to do a bit more testing. Anyway, so yeah, that's the feature I've got. Uh, I've added this week. Let's just, let's just, let's just die, shall we? And then yeah, you die. They lose uh, they lose their reference. <laughs> they go a bit crazy. Um, okay, so in my script, let's go. I'll show you the weapon master. So this is just one one script where I've got these empty variables, but holds everything that I need. Um, so yeah, the sprite is the the weapon sprite. So the uh, the gun, which I can use obviously for the random box when I'm, when I'm iterating through those when it spins. Uh, obviously the name, whether it's unlocked or not. Obviously that's important. Um, the ammo variables. And then just like the statistics for the fire rate, the damage. At the moment, all the damage is at one, so they're all the same damage. Just because I haven't really worked on the weapon um, classes necessarily yet, so they all kind of do the same thing. Just well, they all do the same damage, different fire rates. Um, bullet speeds all the same. Reload times all two seconds at the moment. But these are all things I can work on over time, just to kind of balance out the, the weapons and things. 
Uh, whether it's automatic, whether it's a shotgun, obviously these are important depending on because when I'm shooting, if it's an automatic weapon, obviously it needs to, needs to be when holding it down. If it's a shotgun, obviously it needs to fire more than one bullet, it needs to fire like the spread. And then the minimum and the maximum offset, which I had before, which is obviously the uh, the cone, like uh, where the bullet sprays, so the accuracy near enough is, yeah. Um, so I did an overhaul of this, and then I've got my, um, my point and shoot script, then uses these values instead. So I take a, a reference of the weapon master script, and then from there I uh, get the selected weapon, and then I basically apply these variables there, depending on which one's active. So we'll just use the, uh, the um, where have I got it? The weapon iterator. So it'll be zero or one, so depending on which, which weapon you've got activated, so the pistol or the shotgun. And then if it's zero, it'll be the pistol. If it's one, it'll be the shotgun. And then obviously if you switch those out, uh, if you switch weapons, it will just switch the uh, the chosen class out. Um, so yeah, we've got the, uh, the box here and I just updated this script here. We can get rid of that. I just made some changes just to just shorten the code a little bit. Um, so when you activate the box here, it just uh, goes through, it checks first if uh, if it's spinning or not. And then you can open the box here. So it runs, it runs this, uh, this function down here and then sets everything that needs to be set, hides everything that needs to be hide, hidden, and then you start this coroutine, which allows me to do the the iterating through the weapons here. Um, just a bunch of checks and stuff, and then like the process of opening and closing the box. Also have E, so if the uh, the weapon is ready to collect, so after the spinning is done, it then changes out. So I've got the uh, point and shoot reference script here, PAS, and then I just find the weapon list and then apply the the weapon iterator, and then make that the visible weapon, which is the weapon that's chosen at the end. And same for the character sprite as well. So I've got a list of uh, the character sprites. So obviously when you change weapon, so say you get uh, the pump action shotgun, obviously that sprite for the character needs to be holding the weapon as well. So I change that out. And then I've got a little uh, a little function inside the point and shoot reference that allows me to set, the, uh, set them up. So it changes them and then this will actually apply it inside that script. And then it stops the coroutine for the countdown because obviously the countdown, uh, so for closing the box it needs to be stopped early. If I, if I collect the weapon, it closes the box automatically. Otherwise, it counts down from 10. So if I go close countdown, it literally just waits 10 seconds and then does the function for closing the box, which just sets everything back. But obviously, if we collect the, uh, if we collect the uh, weapon early, we just stop that code routine and it closes the box. Um, got the trigger animation here for the um, for the little E that pops up. So when you go near it, if you go in range of it, um, it uh, opens the box and I've got a little animator window for that so a little animate uh, let me show you if I go on where is it key hint um package manager where's animator Let's see if we can just open it from here actually so we just have the key hint so this is the E popping up and then the reverse is obviously just popping back down again and you can get to the key the key hint when you go near it and then when you go away from it it hides it again let me just show you that so I thought it was really fun just to kind of give an idea of obviously what the player's got to do so it pops up and then it goes back down again um, yeah I had fun doing that been using animate for all my assets and things like that let me just zoom out here so yeah and then in, in the library here I've got my, my key hint and then a key hint in reverse as well so if I just go here you can see it so it does like a little pop and then back down just kind of give it that little fun effect um, yeah, I've got my assets in here. It's been really fun. But yeah, that's sort of that's where I'm at this week. Um, and I'm gonna make another video next week with more progress, hopefully, and then hold myself accountable each week. But yeah, that's it for this week.